you know you're not a beggar, that you're a believer. That know you that you, you, you're standing in right standing with God. Amen. Hallelujah. They decided at that time that they would go to Sepulveda, and he'd go to Australia, and she would, she had things she wanted to do. They divided the money. He died, he died just a, a year or so later, and she died this week, and they don't know when she died because they just found her dead. It don't take money to make you happy. Money is convenient. I'm not saying money's not convenient. But I'll tell you what, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, if you've got joy, you can go through anything. Amen? The devil can't keep you down when you've got joy in your heart. So we're grateful. I had a great Thanksgiving. We had a wonderful family time, and I guess you too. We took two shots at it. We had our lunch, our dinner, and then they came back a lot of that evening for just fellowship and a dessert. We had a good time together. You know, it's good when you love your family, right? I know families that don't even speak. I know families that allowed their parents to die and wouldn't even speak to them. Amen. When they when they were, had a long sickness, they were so determined. And I'm dealing with the situation now. It's time to just forgive and release. It don't matter what it is. Amen. It don't matter what it is. Because if you don't, that bitterness and that unforgiveness will eat at your soul. And you can't really fellowship with anybody. Because Jesus said, if you don't forgive your brother, I can't forgive you. Amen. So it's all based on forgiveness. So I, I'm grateful that I began to practice the act of forgiveness a long time ago. People say, well, I, I forgive, but I'll never forget it. Oh, yes, you will if you forgive. You eventually will forget it. Because you know what? The love of God will just flow so great. That unity of the Spirit. Remember, we're not just wanting unity. We're wanting union. Amen. So we're glad to have you here. If I got any announcements, I want every person 21 years old and younger to come up here and stand. Amen. You bigger ones get in the back foot. Every one of you. Every, come on, Tim. Sit down. No, no, go right up there. I want the bigger ones in the back. and the, Come on, everybody under 21. 21 and under. Let's say 21 and under. Amen. Come on. Don't move like old folks. Move like you're young. Amen. Move like you're young. Amen. Come on. Come on. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Well, Miss Elizabeth stayed with us this morning. I saw her up there singing and praising the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? Did we miss anybody? Come on. Get these twins up here. These twins are important. Everybody. Come on up, Dylan. Come on up. Amen. Amen. Now, this is, not a good, is this not a good-looking gang? I want every one of these young people to know we think they're the best there is, that nobody can offer any better than what you've got to this world. And I want you to know that we are praying for you, and we're expecting the best out of you. You may aggravate us once in a while, that will keep us from loving you. Amen. Sometimes we wish you'd go in the other room, but that don't mean we don't want you to come back. Amen. But I want you all to be happy. How many wants to be happy? Get that hand up, Rachel. You don't want to be, you just want to be half happy? Mm -hmm. She had to think it over and got it this high. Not half masked. How many want to be happy? Amen. Amen. Be happy in the Lord. I want Dylan to be happy. I want every one of the, I want these little twins. They look poker face when they come in, but they're happy. Amen. Brother Brett said to one uh, this morning, what's your name? Are you Isaiah? And he went, at least they know who they are. And I want you young people to always know who you are. What we're going to do, I want you to know we're praying for you and loving you. And whatever you have trouble with, I want you to just drop it in. If you have great trouble with your grades, I want you to begin to drop it into the offering plate and write it down on a piece of paper. And we are a selecting people that God has laid you all on their heart. We want them to pray for you. Amen. We want, we want them to bless you, speak blessings. And... We're going to have a service on the 8th of January because the first, I'd like to have it the first Sunday, but the first Sunday is New Year's Day, and I know a lot of them be in different places with family and not back in town yet. But wherever you go, I want you to know that this church is praying for you. Amen. You may not have it easy where you're at. I heard a young man saying, not in this crowd, but I heard a young man say this morning, I want to be with my family during the holidays. Amen. Aren't you glad you got family? If you don't have family, I want you to know we're your family. We're your family. Wherever you go, we're your family. You know, a lot of people that don't have their family anymore for whatever reason, or they're not in fellowship with it. But, you know, I just want you to know that we love you. Isn't this a good-looking gang? Amen. And there is no better than you. You make up your mind that you are not junk because God don't make any junk. I don't care what anybody says about you. 
Now, one thing y'all gonna have to do is start thinking yourself happy. Don't think how sad you are, how discreet you are. Start thinking yourself happy. Amen. Old Dalen is beginning to get friendly with me and saying hi, Pastor Doris. Amen. We've been working a long time on that. He don't say it when they tell him to say it, but when he walks up the aisle, he looks back and says it to me. <laughs> He's making some progress here, and you guys are making progress. I want you to know the hand of the Lord's on you. You remember that. Amen. I want this young lady to know the hand of the Lord's on her. Amen. I saw some of y'all worshiping this morning. I saw you worshiping this morning. I believe it was one of you two ends. Amen. I saw you worshiping. And don't be too proud to worship God. He is going to make a way for you where there seemed to be no way. And we're believing God for great advances in your life. We're believing God for great choices in your life. And if you don't understand anything, just put it in the hands of the Lord because God's got good things for him. How many believe God's got good things for him? Amen. You all can go down now. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts and talents are in every one of these kids. Amen. We're going to go into the word of the Lord this morning. And, and the thought that we've been uh, sharing with you where we believe that we as United Christian Center are at is we, have, we, are, we are bound to teach the kingdom of God, righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Not a strange doctrine or anything like that. Just what Jesus talked about. And the Bible said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. That doesn't mean there is no kingdom there because you can't see it. Amen? That just means you cannot see. There's a lot of things that I haven't seen that exist in the natural. You may have seen them, but I haven't seen them. I may have seen some things you haven't seen, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. But God has things in your life and my life that we are not even aware of. Amen? God has opportunities for us. So if I can see what, that the kingdom only is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost then I can say whatever changes I go through or whatever I have to release or whatever I have to take on, that it must be the will of God and the purpose of God because he has good things for me. I, I never want to believe that God don't want me to have good things. He said he'd fill my house with good things. And I think we, everyone, can look around our house and see we got a whole lot of good things that we could have done without. But you know what? God loved us, gave the desire of our heart, made it available to us. And therefore, I'm going to give thanks in all things. Now, in order to, the Bible said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. What we're going to talk about today is Romans 8, 28, a simple scripture we permit, we uh, preach all the time. Uh, Sherry, where's the, you got the little leaflets ready? Okay. You don't have to have them now. Well, you can have them now if you want to, but it don't matter to me because I don't, I don't get upset if you're doing something else. That's better than sleeping. So if it'll keep you awake, then you'll hear some of what I got to say. Amen. But, um. All things work together. Everybody say all things work together. Now, how many know what it is to be together? You can be in the same room and not be together. And you can be a thousand miles apart and be together. Togetherness is not a geographical term. Amen? Amen. Just go ahead and give them out to some of them. And this is something I want you, this is very private for you. I just want this to uh, kind of give you a, a call to attention of what God has for you, where our weaknesses are, where our strengths are. But the Bible said, we know, amen. How many can say, I know that all things were together for good because I love the Lord and I'm called according to his purpose. See, if you don't know it yet, you're not able to claim it. And if you're not able to claim it, you're going to miss out on it and what God has for you for this time and this hour. See, there's an appointed season, there's an appointed time, there's an appointed place. We are in the day of appointment, Amen. These young people that I called up here today, I want us to validate them and let them know on a regular basis, not just a season once in a while, but I want them to know that I know that God has great things for them. They may not know it yet. They may wonder what's going to happen. Will it ever work out? Will I ever make it? But I want them to know. You know, when you know something, nobody can convince you that you don't know it. Amen. You may not, you know, you may not even see the evidence of it, but you know it in your spirit. And God is bringing us to that place that we will begin to know that all things, when we begin to understand, and I'm going to tell you one thing, I understand it more than I used to, I don't understand it as much as I would like to, but there's things I don't understand, but I have to know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord 
and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't work together for good if I just select my own way. Amen. But when I when I call upon the Lord and know that this is what I want God for me to do, God has for me to do, and I'm walking in it. Amen. If I'm not walking in it, I'm not called according to his purpose. So the Bible said, and God so loved what? The world. Amen. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever Amen. Brother David has an interview with a, a newspaper, the one that went to Honduras with the day to follow up on what we're doing as a mission church. And uh, they're coming out after this service to take another interview. And I reminded him of some things that we've caught up with this year, we've taken on this year we had in last year. God opened the opportunity for us to do good things in Mississippi. Amen. God opened up the opportunity for us to do good things on December 18th in Appalachia, where people are not as fortunate as you and I. Amen. But God just deals in good things. Now, he created the evil and the good. He, he says in Isaiah chapter 45, I created both the evil and the good, but you've got to decide where you're flowing. Amen. If you're going to think on the bitter things of life, the disappointments of life, you're going to live in that realm. And wherever you live, you'll receive the benefits of wherever you live. You know, in Oakwood, they don't ever have to shovel their sidewalks. The benefit of one of the one of the benefits of living in Oakwood is because they live in a geographical location where the city takes that on. That's a benefit. Wherever you live, you receive those benefits. Amen. And the benefits are sometimes more valuable than the check you receive in monetary value. You know, I can remember when the benefits of NCR was outstanding. That you had box lunches, they had a movie at the at the theater, the auditorium every time you could go to free. You had old river, you could take your kids and your family, they could swim, they could be in the park. They'd do all things. That was a wonderful benefit. And you never miss the benefit until it's gone. There it sits idly, and I'm wondering, why don't they give the people back their benefits? God has benefits for every one of us. So we're going to talk about... God's plan for us as a part of the body of Christ here in Dayton, Ohio. I believe that United Christian Center is a very integral part. But with the chart we have, amen, if you all can move that out here, I want to keep you to keep in vision in your mind that as we stay in alignment with God, everything God has is ours. How many believe that? As I stay in alignment with God, and if I allow anything to draw me aside, and it begins to affect my mind and my will and my emotions, then I get out of alignment with God many, many times. But that's not because God don't want me to have good things. God never at any time wants me to have bad things. Amen. He always wants me to have good things. But in order to do that, i got to, and I began to think on this morning, amen. God, where, where did I lead Jesus out of this? Well, he's with the Father. I, I, I must have drawn this chart differently at a different time. God, I was thinking this morning, God is the owner of all things. All things. No matter what it is. You know, just hate to hear somebody say, well, since the door, this will never happen unless God allowed it. That's hard to figure out sometimes. God has allowed some things in my life that I didn't understand and didn't appreciate. But because he only wants good things for me, I have to understand the will of my Father and the purpose of my Father in my life and begin to tap on, in on those things. So God is a father. He's the owner of all things. He created the world. It all belongs to him. It runs out of anything. He has that same power of creation. So there's nothing, amen, without him. All right. So then Jesus is the CEO. Amen. He's the CEO of this outfit. Amen. Because he's the chief executive officer. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the administrator. And we are right here. So if I let things draw me aside, I've told it to you over and over, but I'm going to tell you and tell you and tell you and tell you until you tell me. Amen. Until you begin telling me back. Amen. And I see, hear some of that in the classes. I'm real excited about what God is doing in some of our classes. We're hearing and we're reiterating. When uh, when Brother Daniel started this morning, I showed Sister, um, Sister Denise, his, her, her, uh, his sister, I said, he's on my message. Here I'm talking about the good things, new and a living way. That's what he started with. Then we started talking about the magnets and the magnetic pull. And the spirit life has a magnetic pull. I said, here's my magnets. Amen. So I know that we're in the will of the Father because God is confirming with signs and wonders. And the desire of your heart, you begin to see that the plan, you can't, you can't break the plan of God unless you just willfully pull away. Amen. So we have all this and all this little stuff down here is just aggravating stuff that when I release myself 
from my spirit to the Holy Spirit, the administrators, Jesus Christ, the CEO, and God the Father, I'm at peace. How many know you'd be scared to death, but when your daddy comes home, you just think everything's all right. He hadn't done anything yet to make you feel less scared. It's just because of his presence. You know, just because of his presence. When the Father steps into the house, well, I'm going to say the Father's in the house today. So the body of Christ, amen, right now we're at an appointed time here as part of United Christian Center. We're not the only appointed persons in this city. We're not the only appointed people at this time, but it's good to know that I'm appointed, amen? It's good to know that God has established me and you, and you know where you're at, and when I've got a good foundation of knowing where I'm at, I know it's easy to get to the next step. And what God is doing, he's stretching us, taking us out of our comfort zone. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever. This morning, Brother David got a, uh, I began the, a letter from South Charleston, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. And um, the people in, a, in area mission fields that they want us to blend with them and assist them. You know, and, and I've, I, we've never met them. Amen. They're part of a family of somebody that we know. But as we begin to flow, God brings into union people that are flowing in the same vein. How many notice that? Flowing in the same vein. Combat is okay, but all the time it gets kind of weary. I don't want to be in combat all the time. You know, finally those boots get wet and cold and you want to take those boots off and, and find you a, a cot, a, you know, a hot spot to sit. But I don't want to be in battle all the time. And as I begin to release myself to God, I become more and more aware that the battle is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. And when I realize it belongs to the Lord, I can stop my fight. I had somebody hang up on me last night because I just had a different opinion from theirs. And I thought, well, that's pretty rude. I knew that's rude, but I didn't know that's quite that rude, you know. And I, I immediately wanted to be offended, but I said, great. I said to myself, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That, now, that nothing means more when you say no thing. Amen. How many's gotten offended by things? Amen. That people did. Why did they do that to me? It's like George Myers. Not, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Amen. It's not about us. It's about the plan that God has for us. So, so God so loved the world that he gave. So if he loves the world and he gave, then I love the world I have to give. I declare to you there's some of you sitting in this building today, young and old alike. That instead of taking your vacations, you're going to be taking the goodness of God all over the world. We are the world changers that God wants us to be. Amen. I don't want to just pass through this world and nothing ever happen that's different. You know, i got some pretty big skeletons in my family closet. Secrets that people don't want you to know. I found one out not long ago. Amen. Amen. But, I, you know, when you find one out... Amen. You think, oh, yeah, I understand now why such and such did such and such. And, you know, I understand a little more. But you know what? When we know that God only wants good for us, if he wants good for me, he loved the world. He don't love the world any better than he loves me. Therefore, it's up to me to be one of the world changers. And if I can't change myself, you know, and allow myself to have the change, I can't expect to take the gospel anywhere else and bring change to those people. And when we talk about, and I've been doing mission work since 1960, Amen. Heavy mission work. And I, when you talk about it, I can think of the many villages that we have been to that didn't have schools or water or electricity or roads or wells. And when you take the good news in, even geographically, that whole community begins to change. If we take the good news. Now, what we try to do is change our theology. God didn't call us to change our theology. Really. I've been a little bit fearful in my spirit of what Islam wants to do. I have nothing to do with their theology. God's bigger than I am. He'll change that when that time comes. You know, and thousands of them are getting saved every day in different parts of the world. We don't hear that part of it. All we hear is the terrorism. And really it puts a mark on everybody that's of that faith or everybody that's of that culture. And they may be very lovely people struggling to survive here in this country, but a resentment begins to grow. So I had to realize that God loved the world, and if we're going, supposed to go into all the world to preach the gospel, it does not exclude anybody. And I'm not ready to go until I'm willing to go. God's not going to send me someplace. I hear people say, God had me do this, and I just hated it. God's never had me do anything I hated. 
Amen. When I did what God had, there was so much fulfillment and joy that sprung from it that I, be, I came home refreshed, or I ended up refreshed at the end of the day. So God so loved the world, amen? And what he's doing, you know, we could as a church try to just reinvent the wheel. That's not what God wants, amen? Do it over a better job and such and that. God wants us to walk in that new and an excellent way, that living way that Brother Daniel opened the class with today. There's a new and a living way. There's a better way for me to do what I'm doing. There's a better way for you to do what you're doing. And as a result of receiving that, that's not just on a spiritual level. Wherever you work, they're going to look at you or somebody else is going to look at you and say, this person can bring something to my business or my city or my community that I haven't seen in anybody else, and they're going to be doing to you because that magnetic pull of the goodness of God is going to be in us. Amen. How many has met somebody you don't know a thing in the world about them? Just like that, you're spirit bonded. Just like that. That's that spiritual magnetic pull that God is trying to bring his body together so we can be compacted by that which every joint supplies. So he's getting us into the new and living way, and in order to do that, it's change. Amen. It's change. You know, we'd like it to, we love to talk about it. It's so much, it feels so good to talk about change. You know, I had Ruth Crockett call me yesterday, and our, our we, I tell you, we, we're great friends. Her birthday just a day off mine. And she called yesterday. She said, this is 36, 24, 36, telling you happy birthday. We haven't changed yet in our mind. <laughs> but the other change takes a little bit longer. See, the idea is good. The idea is good. But we've got to follow on in the change we're pursuing. And that's what God's doing. He's stirring us up. So... Uh, as we began to talk and talk about the good things of the Lord, and she was telling me some things God was telling us to do. See, change, when we take the gospel, change is going to come to the world. Now, you don't have to go to Africa to take it to the world. It may be your neighbor next door. It may be somebody in your family. It may be somebody on your job. Sister Yvonne was telling us, you know, she's wanting to get out of that job, and she's got one person that God has put on her heart ever since she's been there, and she said to her, if you're the reason I'm here, I want you to line up so God will release me. You know, but God has us in certain places to bring change. Amen. When you bring goodness, it brings change. Amen. Righteousness, it brings change. Peace, you know, all over the world they're seeking peace. I remember in Russia, when I, I remember when I went to Germany in 1973, I believe it was. I went to Germany, and we had to sneak into East Germany. We were in West Germany. But God sent us to East Germany, and we had to go through no man's land every night and every day because if we went in there, we had to register where we were going to be every minute, where we was going to eat every meal, and all of that. And they would only allow us a parameter. So we went in under the cover, so to speak. You know, but you know what? We began to speak change like many other people do. Who would ever thought the wall would have come down? Amen. But God brought about the change. When you begin to pursue what God has for you to do, he'll bring the change. You don't have to worry about it. You make this choice, and he'll make the change. Amen. You make the choice, and he makes the change. If you're head over heels in debt today, make a choice to get out of debt. You make the choice, and God will make the change. Now, it won't happen the minute you make that decision. I was in, the, I was in uh, East Germany in 1973, and when the wall fell, about 86 or 87, something like that. The walls came down. We couldn't believe it when we saw on our TV screens them taking sledgehammers and knocking that wall down and rejoicing on every side. Somebody has to believe for change. Amen. It might as well be you. It might as well be me. And you know what? I kind of like it. The same old, same old all the time I don't like. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He told you and I to go into all the world. Amen. And take the gospel. Take the good news. You know, nobody's ever been won to the Lord by bad news. They've been scared to the Lord, but not won. How many ever got won to the, uh, scared, scared to the Lord, but you wasn't won yet? And as soon as the pressure was off, you was the same old person. Nothing had changed. So God wants us to believe for change in the world. Amen. And so I'm not trying to change. Brother David mentioned uh, these people we heard from. He said, the Episcopalian. I said, I don't care who they are. Now, there was a time I would have cared. I remember when we thought Catholics was our enemies. And now they're some of our best friends, you know, because it was theology that divided us. You know, and I was really surprised to know that a lot of Catholics had a born-again experience. I didn't think they had a born experience. 
But the good news that came in my life brought change in my life, and I was open to receive what somebody else had. We must pursue change, amen, and allow it to happen. So he, he wants, don't want us to change your theology. He'll do that. He wants us to change the world. You know, I've seen it happen. When you change, when you t go for change for the world, everything becomes better economically, amen, politically, provision-wise. You know, God just opens up. You know, I'm not the least bit surprised if one of you would come and tell me, Sister Doris, oil come out, up out of my backyard. What am I going to do about it? I'm believing for change. I don't think you always got to work by the sweat of your brow. God's got a better plan. Amen. And you don't have to hang on to it and give it away and he'll give it back. Uh, good measure, press down and shake it together and cause it to run over. I want the running over blessings in my life and your life. I don't want to just have them. I want you to have what I have. Amen. And I want what you got. I mean, well, some of you. Amen. I want, don't want what everybody's got. Some people have got 70 or 8 and about four years behind and scratching. I don't want that. Amen. But God wants us to change. Be willing to change. Don't hold on to things that have just, you know, not got on this little list. I don't know. Uh, uh, this is just a little uh, little exercise, amen? What gives you energy? Well, I said to Brother James this morning, Brother James, I was listening to that station in, in uh, New Orleans, and they're catching big crappie down there. Ooh, they're catching big crappie. You know, that kind of whetted my appetite taking another mission trip down there, amen? <laughs> that was change. And he said, well, I watched the vast, uh, uh, the fishing program yesterday. You know, if we allow our minds to expand, God's got lots of things for us. Amen. And Brother James said, you know, somehow that's the way I can just fully relax. And if you relax, you're going to get energy from God. You're going to be energized. And, you know, we're trying to just get energy, but God wants us to have synergy where all things are working together. That's what that means. Everything begins to work together. You know, we have things that go wrong, so we say, just as I thought. I knew that was going to happen. Well, let's change our conversation. Let's change our commitment. Amen. Let's bring it a whole lot differently. I don't know, but I like change. You know, when you get younger, older, you can't hardly make changes often because people think you're trying to act young. Oh, they do. You know, when you get a certain age, they start blowing taps over you right away. Blowing taps, you know. They see the least little flaw. Oh, getting older. I used to do such a from that way, and I'd think, they lost their mind, you know. But, you know, if I come in here with bright red hair, it'd be a change. <laughs> it'd be a shock. It might be a good idea. You know, I can remember when I started believing God for more things, and somebody said, you're really changing. And I thought, well, good. You can see it. That I knew I didn't have to be a beggar anymore. I didn't know I, that I could. I didn't know I had. I could be the head. I thought I had to be the tail. Amen. When I found that out, it was a blessing in my life, and I began to pursue being the head. You know, just saying, well, I don't. I might be the tail, but I don't want to be the tail end. I'm going to try to stay at the head of the tail end deal. No, I began to realize that God wanted to give me good things. But in order to be good things, I have to be able to change. I drove to Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago. I don't even know who I was with and why I was going, but that's not because I'm old. I just don't remember. But I couldn't believe it had been a few months, maybe three months or, or less since I'd been there. And good night, the change has taken place in the geography between here and there. New buildings have sprung up, beautiful, completed new buildings. And I'm thinking, how did they do that so fast? I don't even recognize this area. Subdivisions begin springing up. I hadn't been there for a while. The change really impressed me. You know, change will bring impression if you receive it. So we are the world changers. Can you say that about yourself? And as we draw closer to God's plan, all these things are going to begin to work together. I don't know about you, but I like for every part of my body to work. Good idea. Good idea. You know, if you're sick, and you're just believing for health, healing, God wants you to believe for health. And when I start believing for health, change had to come in me. My appetite had to change, my diet had to change, my understanding had to change. I was so glad when that doctor said yesterday that coffee won't hurt you. 
I was just as excited as could be. I listened to him another half hour. Now, he said, if you got diabetes, it may hurt you. And a couple other diseases, but said, other than that, coffee won't hurt you. I thought, you're a man of God. I know you are. I know you are. Because you know what? That's one change I don't want to make. But I've made up my mind if that's what, he, if what God wants me to do, you know. It, you don't make change immediately. Change begins to get into your ears and your spirit and such. It takes a while to work change. As we say all the time, it's a process. The process has to have time to work. Amen. If you don't give the bread enough time to be processed, the dough enough time to be processed, then you're not going to have good biscuits or anything. There has to be a process working. So what you're going through is not what the devil's doing to you. God's just allowing you and I to walk through the process. Amen. And the process can be beneficial to us. So all things work together. Amen. We're learning that if we're out of alignment, we are not in line for the blessings that come with the change. If I let anybody here or anybody anywhere or my own self draw me out of alignment. Amen. I don't like just to try to get the energy to hang on. You know, I'm not, you know, a friend of mine used to say, you know, Sister Doris, you can get used to hanging if you hang long enough. Well, I'd hung as long as I wanted to by then. So I don't want to hang any longer. I like to see the promise coming from afar off. I like the vision of the prodigal father, the father of the prodigal son. He never quit looking for his son to return. Never. And when he, that son was afar off, he saw that son coming. He said, kill the fatted calf, get the best robe, get the ring. Amen. Tell him we're having a party. Amen. But the younger brother wasn't willing to change. I've been here all this time. You never did this for me. He could have had it all along. He could have had a party every week if he wanted to. But you know what? Because he was not aware. He didn't know that all things worked together. He was in his father's house all the time in his father's presence and never tapped in on what the brother out in the field eating the husk of the swine knew was available to him. You've got to know what's available to you. God has some good things available to you. Now, in order to make change, we have to begin to stir up in our spirits, you know. We have to allow discernment perception to come in our life. You've got to bring things into your life. You've got to bring things into your life, you know. We're so heaven-bound that we're not now-bound. I, I expect to see you in heaven. But I don't want us to be in misery all the way to get there. Mm -mm. I want to be heaven bound and heavenly minded, but I want to be able to find my place in the spirit and this earth during my lifetime, during the appointed time that God asked me that I can do like Paul. I can say, I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. Now there's a crown of life righteous laid up for me and a crown of life. You know, there's five crowns that were to receive, and I'm not going to go into that this morning. So we've got to allow the Holy Spirit how many are aware of the fact, well, let me ask you this. How many are aware of the fact that the Holy Spirit's revealing truth to you afresh and anew? Amen. And you don't understand it, but you know there's something moving in your spirit. Amen. So what you begin to do is ponder on it. You Mary pondered and said, let it be according to thy word. But she had to ponder on those things. She had to ponder on those things. God looked in the heart of Mary and knew she was one that could receive you know, the conception, the immaculate conception. Not everybody would have called it, but she pondered in her spirit. Be it unto me according to thy word. So when God says something to you, you may not understand. That's how you're going to begin to prime the pump of the Holy Spirit moving in you and using you in a supernatural way. Just be, begin to say, be it unto me according to your word, O oh God. If that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me, I take it as your word. I'm going to hang on to it. Then I'll begin to ponder on it, and I'll begin get new avenues of thought and learning to bring it into my world. You know, I want my world changed. You know, I don't want it turned upside down, but if that's what it takes, I want my world changed. God has been so good to me, I don't quite understand it, but I want him to continue to be good to me, so I'm going to look for the changes to continue to come. Amen. So we've got to begin to realize that we're not just here to enjoy what God gives us. We've got to learn to become perceptive. Amen. God, what is it? You know, you may be sitting in a restaurant and God's going to show you across the aisle something he wants to do for that person. And you may not be able to do it at first and you may not be good at it at first. But I speak unto you and I, I speak into your life. You go begin to get up every once in a while and walk over and say, you know, the Lord gave me a word for you. Would you receive it? 
How many can see themselves doing that? Amen. If God reveals things to us, they may not know anything about how to receive from God. And all I do at that point, and you do at that point, is open up their life. Amen. And, and give them that word, and the entrance of his word gives light. Amen. And they begin to get hope. And they begin to, hope begins to spring forth in them. Everybody is looking for change in their life. Amen. You know, like I said, the couple that won the lottery, all that money didn't do them any good. That was a big change, if you ask me. Amen. That, that's a change I don't think I'd mind, but I don't like the end of the story. Amen. The end of the story is not as good as the beginning of the story. So we got change our thinking. Now I'm going to ask you just a simple question. What is it you think about, maybe if you stop at a stoplight waiting for the light to change, what are you thinking about? What am I going to do? How long am I going to be sick? We've got to change our thinking to think on healing and health, provision and prosperity, goodness and love and mercy. We've got to let our thinking change. What is it you think about when you finally lay your head down and go to go to sleep at night? And you're laying there. Brother, you know, some of you men, you can go to sleep on the way to the pillow. On the way to the pillow. And here, here's old sister. She, she's screaming, it's, Wiggling, squirming, and because she's got all this stuff, we tend to take stuff to bed with us. You all go to bed and go to sleep. Ninety-nine percent of you. It's very unusual. I hear a man say, "I just couldn't sleep last night." If you couldn't sleep sleep last night. I know there's big trouble in your life, because men have the ability to just go in and lay it down. <laughs> They're sound asleep. Amen. Some of you go to work, sleep on the way to the pillow, but whatever time you have. What is it you're thinking about? Are you stewing about what happened today? Are you stewing about what might happen tomorrow? Are you thinking of the change of goodness coming in your life? What are you giving your thoughts to? I control my thoughts. I control my thoughts. And sometimes I had no idea how wayward they are until God teaches me. Amen. How to think. And that's what he's doing to all of us. He's teaching us. So what are, you, what are you thinking about? Amen. What am I going to do tomorrow? What's going to happen next? Amen. Will I ever get out from under this load I'm carrying? You know, nobody can make you carry their load unless you're willing to pick it up. Blame anybody you want to, but just go look in the mirror. Just go look in, even the devil don't do that. Amen. Our thoughts should be on the goodness and greatness, greatness of God, and then excitement would overwhelm, overwhelm us and we wouldn't be walking in fear. Now I'm going to give you just a few things and close out on time. Remember, all things work together. Amen. I just got, I've been wanting one for a long time. It's just a small one, but I, I like to know how my body works. Anybody here curious besides me? I like to know how my body works. When that doctor started explaining some things yesterday, I had a better understanding how my body works. So I've been asking the Lord to give me, you know, a, this is a bad thing to ask for, a transparent man, you know, that shows how all the body parts work, you know. Every organ, every tissue, what it does. And I finally found a book like that. I bought one for my great-grandkids because I don't want them to wait until they get 70 years old to find out how it works. You know, if I'd known the health, they'd taught me health in health class, I wouldn't be in this shape, neither would you. You know, I'm like my friend. Today's my birthday. And he said, Sister Doris, if I'd known I was going to last this long, I sure took better care of myself. If we, when you know... Then you have an opportunity to do something. Well, you know. You know, I go into the hospital and the doctors and nurses are, are outside smoking. I'm thinking, have you all lost your ever-living mind? And I want to tell you one thing I'm thankful for this morning. January 10th, this next year, I will have quit smoking 50 years ago. 50 years ago. But I'm no fool. I think if I'd suck on one, I'd be back under bondage again. Amen. But I would just thought this morning driving to church, do you realize that you soon will have, have been in the ministry 50 years? Do you realize that I've been in the ministry longer than I saved? Now figure that one out. Take you a while for that to catch up. But January 10th, amen. So what I have to do is I have to change my thoughts. And my thoughts have to line up with what God says about me. And if what God says about me, everything God says is a law. We understand that, right? Everything God says is a law. Everything I hear that somebody said God said, I don't believe everything. If it lines up with the word, I believe it. 
But in order to have change, I have to begin to release things. How can I, if I'm full of stuff of everybody else's and myself, my own, there's no place for God to bring good things and new things in my life. I'm hanging on to it. You know, hanging on to it. Okay, so I got you a stress buster here. How many like some stress busters? Now, when we go through the world, this is what I want to, here's what we're assigned to do as people of the kingdom, to love people. You know, nobody can deny you if you really love them and they know it. How many know what it is to love somebody and they don't love you back? If you've ever experienced that in your life. Wouldn't matter if it's a teacher, a friend, a spouse, a relative. You really love them and they don't, they're not willing to love you back. You don't know why. Don't you feel like you're wasted material and, and you're, not, you're not, not up to par? If you're rejected. Our call is to love others, to forgive them, to be of service to them, walk in humility and compassion. You know, I say this. Now, there's a whole lot of you this this church that does a lot of things. Chris and Sarah are servants of the Lord in this church. It don't matter who it is. It really don't matter to Sarah, matter to Sarah because she volunteers Chris all the time. But they serve. I've watched them serve people. Never, and some of you all are servants too. But I, I see the... When I went to somebody's house, they moved about five times. I said, Lord, please bless them for helping them move all these times. I had no idea... You know, when we don't know something, we don't have an idea about it. We don't understand. Okay. Are you ready for your stress buster? Okay, lay down whatever you got. Okay, that means you too. Hot shot. Yeah, thank you. Here's what I want you to do. All over the building, just close your eyes. Now, I want you to say to yourself, I'm going to relax because God is in control. You don't have to say it out loud. Just say it to yourself. Say it again. Say it one more time. Now invite the presence of God into your life. Just open up your heart. Say, Lord, I invite your presence in this situation, whatever it is. I'm filled and surrounded by the presence of God, which brings peace. Now let the warmth of that peace begin to rest in your spirit. Just let it flow. Let the peace of God begin to flow. No matter what situation you are, you feel bound in, let the presence of God and the peace of God begin to flow. And just say this prayer in your own spirit. Lord, I'm having a hard time dealing with, and you speak it in your own spirit. Please help me to know how to handle this. Give me the wisdom. See, we always ask God to do it. He wants us to do it. Begin to think not just on healing, but on health. Not just on abundance, but on provision. And not just on provision, but abundance. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to forget all the blunders that you've been hitting yourself over. How many of you would think it was unusual if I got up here this morning, the first thing I did was sock myself in the jaw? And we do that so many times. We beat ourselves down. Forget all the blunders. You know, life is made up of growing and growing, and growing. One city I used to go to in Mexico, they had an absolutely human bone pile the size of a six or eight room house. That meant if your family could not afford to pay the rent on your grave, they dug you up and threw you on that bone pile. And some of those skulls, I got a picture of my hand on a skull, a living skull, and Long time after that person was dead, that hair continued, continued to grow. And we got to understand. Amen. Start crying over missing the mark. Understand that missing the mark is one way of learning how to hit the target. It's one way to learn how. You, got, you just keep practicing, 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 taking the test over and over. But when you learn to hit the target, 
you realize some of the things that you weren't doing in order, in order for that boat to get right where that boat guy is. And sometimes failure, failure is a vital a part of my achievement. Because if I'm a success of everything that I think, it may hold me back from what God has for me. It may hold me back. I just begin to thank Him for His goodness to you. Just let the Holy Spirit bring thoughts of where His goodness has been in your life recently. Not 40 years ago when God did something to you. Update your thankfulness. Thank Him for your health. Thank Him for your abundance. And you know, if you just take those quiet times about three times a day and just do this little process, just do this little process, you'll find. See, some people don't think they have the time or the money, the time or the money, to do, to do things, to get away. I can't get away. I don't have time. I don't have the money. You, you can get away right now. Eleanor Roosevelt used to say that while she's waiting five minutes to see somebody in the cabinet or something, she would sit there and take five-minute vacations. See, it don't take a lot of money or time to get away. It just takes right now. And you can get away from those things that's eating at you, those things that elevate you. Just begin to meditate and ponder on the good things of God. Do it two or three times a day. Just open yourself up more and more for this presence of God to come in. And as that presence of God flows through you, any yoke that's on you will begin to be destroyed or annihilated by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes success is the greatest test of our maturity. The greatest test of our maturity. As a as T.D. Jake says, can you stand to be blessed? I've been telling you I wanted to read that book and didn't even know it. Looking at my bookcase yesterday, and I, God, I haven't read it yet. But I've got to ask myself every day, can I stand to be blessed? Or will my blessing take me out of the things that God's called me to do? This little sheet I want you to just take through yourself. I don't want it back. What gives me energy? What energizes me? What brings joy to me? If I've got joy, I've got strength. So many of you told me this morning, I asked you about your holiday, and so many of you said we had a good time, we laughed, we had fun. That's what you needed. That's what you needed. Just write down some things that give you energy. It, it could be pie baking. It could be anything. It's what gives you energy. But also on the next one, write down what drains you, what plays on your strength and sucks it out of you. Number three, what can you let go in order to create more balance in your life? What can I let go? What can I release? And number four, what am I passionate or enthusiastic about? You know, I'm passionate when you mention missions. or I'm passionate over these kids. When they bring me, when Jordan said I did four goals, we won four to nothing, I did four goals. And he says, I want it. I said, no, your team won it. You just worked with the team. But you know what? I'm passionate about that report because I see him energized. When he come in, he makes a beeline to tell that. What you're passionate about, you'll pursue. You can't to find the time to the funds for relaxing and re recreation. See, recreation is not always games. It's recreation. That's what it is. It's recreation. What can you do to recreate an atmosphere that makes you be at peace and want somebody else to share it you know I've been to the Opryland Hotel and I think everybody ought to go I think everybody ought to go it's like sleeping in, in, in the rainforest sleeping in the rainforest and I can get on my balcony five times a night if I wake up and walk, just sit there and watch get the same room every time I go that that recreates me that brings right, it's, see, it's, it could be a ball game, but that's not my stuff. You know, it could be a lot of those things, but I need something to recreate me, not drain me, to recreate me. And if you can't find the, 
uh, funds or the time, remember when sickness comes, you'll find both. I used to tell some of my friends, you know, I visited Charles Cox in the hospital several times. For a season, I would fly out every Sunday night after church. We had church almost every other week. So we'd take Monday off. and I'd fly out every Sunday night from the Red Eye at Columbus to Houston to, to visit Brother Charles, be with him a couple of days and fly back, you know. And I used to tell him, Charles, do you understand a beach in Hawaii is a lot cheaper than this hospital room before you ever got there? You know, do you understand how much it costs to be sick today? You can take the deluxe cruise cheaper than you can get sick. The deluxe cruise. Somebody just had a little tiny surgery. I don't, didn't look like it lasted 15 minutes and it was over $10,000. I'd take $10,000 and go to a lot of places and rest and relax and recreate. But we wait until our body dictates to us what we have to do instead of making choices. If I make the choice, God will make the change. Amen. We wait to forgive. To, you know, I know people wait to forgive till they're ready to die. A lady called me yesterday. She said, the Lord has been telling me to write everybody that either I've offended or they offended me and tell them I release them and forgive them. I said, that's a good thing to do. You know, and what she's doing is recreating the right spirit, you know, in her. Not, she said, I don't hold any ill will, but I don't want them to be under the bondage of what they did to offend me. I want them to know that there's forgiveness. God told me to do it. said, I went on a three-way uh, search for God to direct me, and that's what he told me to do, write everybody. She called me for an address. said, I want to write so-and-so. She said, I would call him, but maybe it's too much for me to call him and verbalize it, so I'm writing him a letter. She said, I want to read it to you. I want you to see how it sounds. I said, it sounds wonderful. The only thing you forgot to say is I love you. And I love you to it. Now, she was doing it because she loved them. Amen. But you know what? She was, if, if that forgiveness, that release is not there, it drains you. It drains you. It takes so much out of you. And how much we allow the devil to have of us. You know, he steals, he kills, he destroys. But what he wants us to do is recreate a right spirit in us. Amen. Allow that spirit to just flow. Why don't you take three or four times a day just to, you know, sometimes I'm going to be honest with you and you could be honest with me and I think it'd be the same words I'm saying. Sometimes that little Charles Capps book, just repeating that every day, invaded my time and my schedule and it was a stress thing sometimes instead of just a blessing. You know, I knew it was something I needed to do. However, I got to where I could just sit in the presence of God and just begin to think those thoughts and allow them to flow through me and the Holy Spirit to prompt me what to, what to say and what to do. Because a law will put you under bondage. And the law of confession is good, but that's as far as you go. You have got to establish the relationship through your confession. You know, now I'm not saying I don't do that anymore. I think it's a very important thing. But I, I began to get under stress. And, oh my gosh, I forgot to say my, read my chapter, my little 23 to page 34 chapter I forgot to do that and I'm tired and I didn't you know and I was reading it so fast sometimes how many guilty how many will identify with that okay so I just began to say God you know my heart and I believe I believe you want me to have nothing but good and I began to put my heart into meditation with the presence of God and he began to bring peace back into my soul see that was an assignment for us and there are assignments that I go back over. You know, you may be like me. I'm aware of the fact that I have used the computer so much that I can't spell good like I used to, do math like I used to. I'm still a little better at math than the other stuff because I don't do much math on the computer. You know, I can't even write good enough for me to read if it gets cold because I've let my computer do all of it. I released it. You know, so my skills are, are, are suffering as a result of it. And I got letters I want to write to people. And I don't like to write a computer letter. I can. It's better than nothing. But I'm saying to myself, I'm going to go back and get me a, 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 a penmanship tablet like, like these kids do. And I'm going to hone my skills again because I've released them. I haven't used them. And I've become dull in them. And I want to write people from my heart. And it just, computer seems a little cold to me for heartfelt things. 
So that magnet, magnetic pull of wanting to be in good relationship with them, you know, I have been meaning, how many has been reading, meaning to write, to write somebody or call somebody for the last year? Come on, be honest. And you really want to do it, but time gets away from us. And then you hear about it and you say, oh, I, I was wanting to write them so bad. I've begun to do that. David's aunt on his father's side always was so good to my children. And I've had her on my mind and that part of the family on my mind. And I go almost by her house every day I come home, you know. And they don't live a stone's throw from me. And every time I would pass her lane to come off of Linden Avenue, I think, oh my gosh, I haven't gone to see Alice yet. And then I got on the way to that. I don't want anything to happen to her and me not go see her. I'm going to feel it. So I began to just impart feeling bad over it. So the other day I was driving and I called her. I said, Alice, how you doing? She said, we're doing good. I said, I've had you on my mind and I just want to make sure that you're okay. Is there anything I can do for you? You know, and that weight lifted off my shoulders. She said, why don't you come and eat Thanksgiving dinner with us? I said, you wouldn't want all that I'm bringing. <laughs> Amen. But I will come by. And that didn't complete it. I want to go by because you know what? I've never been with her that there wasn't joy. She's not the kind of person that drags on you. And I'm thinking, she's too nice a friend to me for me to ignore her. I'm not in the family, but we're, our friendship's not based on the family. You know, I got out of the family a long time ago, but she always showed me love and showed my kids love. And her little daughter would squeeze my kids' cheeks. I even get both of them and just squeeze them, tell them how sweet they were. You know, some of that family didn't think they're sweet. But you know what? She showed love. I felt her love. Every time I'd go by, I'd think, Alice has been good, to, too good to you and your children. You, you can't. And I'd feel a heavy spirit. How many's ever had that? You feel a heavy spirit when you haven't done it. We've got to start recreating ourselves, not recreation, recreation. You ever think of it when we say recreation? It don't sound as good when I, as when we say recreation. So I'm seeing myself back at Opryland. Only I want three or four more days out of it. And just study there. It's got everything there to do. I don't want to do any of it, but just enjoy the nature, the beauty. And if you haven't been there, you can't understand how ministering it is to you. Some of you just like to go watch the waves. I like to go sit by the sea and just watch the waves roll in. Nobody has to talk to me. I don't have to have any music. I join with it. I become in union with it. And that recreates things in my life. Your assignment is to begin to recreate your spirit. We recreate our, sp our flesh. We find all the fun we can get and buy programs and watch programs that has canned laughter. That way we don't even have to laugh. But I found out yesterday, I, I kind of sat down. I, I'd been out of the house for two days, and I kind of enjoyed it. Thursday and Friday, I didn't even go out of the house except to get the mail up in the front of my house, put something in the car. At least I didn't leave it. And I sat down in the afternoon and watched a few little funny shows, and I just found myself laughing and laughing. Not a soul in the room but me. And I thought, ain't you something? You can have fun with yourself. Don't have to hire it. Bring it in. Anybody understand that? So what he wants us to do is recreate. See, God, cre we ask God to create a right spirit in us, but we've got to recreate. Amen. So what I, my assignment is, what does the Lord require of thee but to love God, show mercy, and do that which is pleasing in sight? Does that sound hard? That don't sound hard to me. And we put ourselves under weights and measurements. But he said, lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets you. Father, I thank you for the word. Lord, I thank you for the recreation of life and strength and energy and health, provision, and always, Lord, I want to acknowledge you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless your holy name. Thank you for your goodness to me. Thank you for letting me know every day more and more who you really are to me. And Lord, I just thank you because I have the assurance that any sin I would commit, I'm not afraid of sin. I'm not under the fear of falling in sin. I'm not, I'm not self-assured because my righteousness is in you. And Lord, you've already forgiven anything that I can do. So I feel fully forgiven. Shall I continue in sin? God forbid. But Lord, I know I'm already accepted in you, the beloved. I'm already loved. You're the best lover of my soul there is. And in quietness and confidence, I gain strength in you. I bless this congregation. 
Lord, raise some of them up to go to the points of the earth and bring this good news to downtrodden people. God, it's a change in the Islamic world when women are beginning to be educated. Oprah Winfrey bought, bought one of those changes. She didn't do it by praying. She did it by going over and building a school, bringing 500 kids at a time to study to where it began to grow and grow, and others caught the vision. Lord, there's a magnetic pull when we begin to vision and share it with one another, and we come into one another's vision. And then that's, that's union instead of unity. So I thank you that we're walking in that day and this hour, and our life is filled with the goodness of God. In Jesus' name, for your glory only. I pray for every family here. I pray for Matt and Lee Dell as they reestablish their new home. And, and they, they're they searching after you for lead, leading and guidance and provision. Lord, I pray for them. I pray for Jesse as he goes, you know, and he serves our country. I pray for him. I pray for Suzanne. I pray for John. Lord, I pray for all these. Everything you set before us, Lord, we just speak blessings to you. In Jesus' name, for your glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's not a friend like our lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. He is a friend that will never leave us. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. You believe that this morning? God, I'm so glad you're my friend. I am a friend of God. You said to Abraham, I speak to him face to face because he's my friend. I thank you, Lord, because we have that relationship. Give us a great day this afternoon. Recreate us as we share together in fellowship and strength. In Jesus' name. Mike and Bobby Klosser have been staying in the house whether they were down here visiting friends. They're going to be coming and joining lunch with us, fellowship with them, and see what's going on in their life. They're the one, they moved up to Cleveland. He got transferred. But, you know, we want, we want to have fellowship with, ship with them. Are you going to you want to bless the food before we go out here? Lord, we speak blessings of the food, the provision, the hands that prepared it. Lord, we thank you for it. Give us great fellowship and strength in Jesus' name. Bless them as they bring their tithe and offering unto you, Lord. Multiply it in a, in a manifold way, Lord. We can't count the ways you're so good to us. In Jesus' name, amen.